now I'd like to bring up the director, Christopher Fitzpatrick, and our hostage. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was a film that sort of came in. I think I it was a friend of ours that did a QA. Yeah, that it, yeah. 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 And uh, that I did a QA for someone that I moderated QA for another uh, filmmaker's film. And he said, You should check out my friend's film. And I asked you to send it. And it came in and I was just like, fuck, how did I not find this guy and make a documentary first? I mean, I need Grant Hart. I mean, you know, and Replacements. The replacements, and yeah, it's like yeah, it's like had I had I ever been to Oklahoma, yeah, I would have beat you. You would have stole my idea. Well, I would have so stolen your idea. I was no. dying to do the story for years, and finally had the time of my life to do it. Yeah, I mean, it, it, this is a wonderful film, which is why we chose Thank it you. for our opening night. And uh, Mike, I, 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 you are a godsend. I would, everything. I can't wait to see you. Play. Like, I thought literally, my friend, I was thinking, it's like, you know, I should go, I can go to Tulsa, I can see the Dillon and the Woody Guthrie Museum, and I'm going to go see you. And it was like three things in Oklahoma that would make me visit. Well, come on then. I, you know what? I, I probably will. I probably will. It's like, cause I, was, I mean, seeing someone on the on their home turf is amazing. Okay, so I got to ask you, when did you find my, when did, did and, and start the idea of this film? The first time I saw Mike was in 95. He was playing in Heater, as shown in the film. Uh, and, you know, it was just years of then watching him with the Hasi Trio in college, which was the biggest, you know, imprint on my, you know, like musical listening. You know, I learned how to dance because of listening to the Hasi Trio, like, you know, being okay with all that uh, in front of people. And then as I would come to Oklahoma, um, every time, you know, I, I lived in Dallas most of that, and I would drive up to Oklahoma for work a lot covering sports, and I would see the Hosty duo. And so when I, I don't know, 19, uh, 2016, I was in Tulsa for a fantasy football draft, and we all went out, a bunch of college guys, and we saw Mike, and it said Hosty duo on the bill, but he was playing by himself. And I was like, oh, wow, he's playing by himself. What's going on? It's a Saturday night. It's not the deli. And uh, after way too many beers, I went up and asked him if uh, – he would mind me doing a documentary on him, and he was like, yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> kind of like he did with Oklahoma Breakdown. You know, just like, oh, who cares? You can, yeah, sure, you can cover the song. And then uh, just started, and I went to the Dan Silverleaf, covered the first gig, uh, it was a few months later after I had my own gear. I had just become a freelancer, and was, uh, I'm like, well, I gotta start at some point. So I just started, and then went up to his house to interview him, and then just kind of started from there. I mean, just beautifully done, beautifully done. Thank you. I mean, Mike, so, got to ask you about Oklahoma Breakdown. Did that, I mean, all of a sudden you're getting, I'm assuming, royalty checks for writing the song. No. <laughs> really? No, so uh, you have to get a mechanical license to cover a song. And the Smith Records didn't send me one. I sent them one. I got I got online and made my own off the internet because I didn't know anybody who did it. So I go, well, I'll just make my own. And all the language is like hitherto, though for 90 days and for accounting. And I you know, I put all this stuff in there. I did put some funny stuff in there, like I, I'm owed a beach ball or something. You know, kind of, because it's like three pages. So I go like, well, why not? I haven't got my beach ball yet. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, they didn't, they didn't activate it. So I missed out on the first. So when it was selling that year, I missed that first half year of uh, okay. royalties. And then I, found, I got a friend of mine who's an immigration attorney to send a, a letter. And then they, they go, oh, oh, yeah, oh, we just haven't signed it. And they backdated it. Like, oh, okay. They, no, but they didn't backdate it. They put the date, just the current one on it. So I missed that whole first. Uh, and then right after that, that was CD sales in 2008, 2009. That's when Spotify and Apple Music went. So people stopped buying CDs after that. But for, so that first couple of years, you know, I, I got a check for you know, you know, twelve hundred dollars. But you know, it wasn't it wasn't like people think like go like God dang, you got a lot of money out of that, right? Is that a new van? I go no. <laughs>
a plumbing truck hit my old van, and I the insurance bought this one. <laughs> I mean, it, but I'm for, I mean, as, as someone who's been working in the independent film world for 39 years, uh, I understand. And it's just, it's that whole, um, you know, it's like, well, you make all these movies, and it's like, you know, you must be rich. And I'm like, yeah, no, no, I drive a, you know, 20 year old Jeep out there, and, you know, barely right. made it overheated at last right. year's film festival. <laughs> you know, and I was pouring bottles of water into the radiator. You yeah, know, right. so, yeah, it, it's, I, I, I do understand, you know. Uh, I mean, how, would, would you, I, do you ever like think about what can I write that someone else might make a hit of? Uh, no, uh, I, I don't really write for that. Like try to craft something like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just try to write a, a good song, and you know, maybe someone will hear it and they'll want to cover it. But uh, no, I, I never. If I do, it'd be more like a joke song, like a. You know, writing a hit for Garth Brooks or something. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> let, let, let me, let's open up. Yes. Any any questions for either of these guys? Yes. You, you mentioned you saw Posty back in Quo, oh, was it 1994, 95? 95, yeah. yeah. Are, you, are you from Quo? I uh, was at OU at the time. And uh, my brother had already been going to school. And I had lived in Oklahoma City as a kid from the ages of 3 to 10. So. Um, no, but yeah, I was in school. I think it was 18 or 19 when I first saw Mike. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Are you from Oklahoma? Yeah. Yeah, I could definitely tell there's a... I, this was one of the best... This is the best audience that I've seen, even in Oklahoma City, like just some of the references that I, I would just, man, that didn't land. Or that it, mm -hmm. when he threw out Spanky and Buckwheat, I just thought when I was editing it, I'm like, somebody's going to be laughing. But I hadn't heard a chirp yeah. until tonight. Everybody was dying. <laughs> There were so many great, like, funny moments in there that I had was like wondering, man, I, maybe this just wasn't that funny. And I, tonight was completely different. Like, it was a great, just a great reaction. You got an old school liberal audience. <laughs> so, man, I, this was the perfect audience. Yeah, this was a lot of pop culture. I, everyone here is probably really, really, really much, like deep into pop culture. Yes, Chris, that was the most amazing thing I've seen. And you are. An Incredible honor. I mean, I Thank you. I've been with music business for 57 years, and I ain't seen nothing like you before. No, no, no. I haven't either. <laughs> and I would love to talk to both of you about a couple of different things. Thank you so much. I don't know if you would, yeah, I would let you say that into the mic. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, any, any questions, Yes. Yes. You may be the further. I've been wondering when somebody was going to ask me this question. When, so I was pretty much done, and I think I had a conversation with you. You're like, hey, you're not going to believe what just happened. I'm like, what? You're like, I just went to Toby Keith's house and played. He wanted, he wanted to cover Oklahoma Breakdown. I'm like, really? <laughs> okay, let me think about this one. Do I want Toby Keith in this film? And if I do, I'm, there was a chance that I was going to have to make fun of him at the time, you know? And, and he's got his own personal things going on with, with him right now. And I had really loved the fact that he, you know, Mike's going to get some money out of this deal for one. <laughs> I hope, you know? And it, but he didn't drop the single until I think officially what, on Spotify like a, two weeks ago or something like that. It was funny because I, I, I just noticed that I did that second cover of it. And I'm like, wait, where did that? Yeah, it was basically in the can. It was done. I mean, I I did have time to potentially throw something together and get Toby Keith into it, but I, I just knew that if if I did it, I was gonna have to sort of make a joke out of it because I just don't like Toby Keith's music. I mean, I'm just, I'm just gonna be honest with you. I didn't really put any music in this unless I sort of made fun of it that I didn't like on, in a way. You know, it's just the way I approach music. So I was just like, I just really would just rather not have Toby Keith in this film. Not just for that reason, but there's a lot of politics involved with Toby Keith, too. Um, yeah. It's funny, because I, I saw, when I first heard the song, I kept thinking of Miranda Lambert, who was living in Oklahoma with the ex-husband singer. Right. Yeah, whatever his name is. Um, and I kept thinking, she should cover this song. Because <laughs> it would just sort of like be a beautiful comment on that whole breakup. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. It, it, it you, you know, for uh, I had never met him before. He wanted to do this, and he called me up, and, and he, first of all, he asked me if he could do it. Then he took care of all the business first. He asked me to play on it, 
and he gave me all my rights, publishing and writing, on his album, which he didn't have to do. And he was a really, he was really nice. Like, and I know, you know, a lot of people don't like him for whatever reason, but to me, you know, in his own space, he is a different person for sure. And and uh, I and I, I'd never met him before. And I went to his house, and it's like it looks like, you know. Where did Michael Jackson was over at his house? It's like that. It's a giant road. And he's got a room, and the thing turns around, and there's a studio, and there's a slide, and a movie screen in the backyard. And it's like, what is this place? But uh, no, he was he was really nice about it, and uh, he was uh, uh, generous. He took care of all the business first, so that didn't happen the first time. And uh, and uh, he goes, I got, I got, Hoss, you need to tell me a story about this song. And I go, and I go, well, you know, I told him the record label, he goes, we're going to take this song back. We're going to take it back. He goes, I'll see you later. i got to fly to Cabo to meet Sammy Hagar. And, goes, <laughs> and, I, go, and I looked down and I go, okay, Toby, yeah, have a good flight. Uh, talk, talk to you later, buddy. Uh, but, uh, no, it was, I mean, it was pretty weird. My first Nashville session was in Norman. Because he flew somebody in and, you know, the wall. Had an engineer there, it hadn't slept, and it was, it was pretty interesting. And he let me do whatever I wanted on the song, too, so. He just goes, just play, and I go, okay. So I ripped off a ridiculous solo that shouldn't be on there. <laughs> <laughs> the important thing is you're getting royalties in this. Yeah, well, that's the main thing, you know. Yeah. He, he, was, he was very uh, insistent on it, and he goes, like, what, have you made money off this? Like, because he sees. He must have seen it all over. There's merchandise, like you know, in the movie, yeah. of people, and a lot of people just make stuff. And I go like, well, no, and, and he's like, well, we're going to change that. And he, good. Uh, so in that respect, it was. I mean, it was it was great. And I was like, hey, I drove home. And I go, yes. <laughs> wow, I did it actually. I go like, I forgot all my stuff. <laughs> and I had to go back the next day. <laughs> I got so excited, just got my car and left. <laughs> I did want to just follow up on that too. I was very like happy when you told me that, and I uh, just because I was like, this is going to be its own thing. It, it'll and if it helps promote Mike and it helps promote the film, which then helps promote Mike, right. you know that to me, I was like, that's that's great. It, it it doesn't need to be in the film to be you know to to help right, this right, whole right. thing out. And I was like, it, it's going to do its own thing organically and you know it didn't change you know it's all about changing right you make a film you kind of want to what changed the subject or I mean, the I, direction I, I, yeah and i've been there where it's like we finished with editing the film and all of a sudden oh something else happened someone got divorced something you know and it's just like the queen dies yeah yeah do you go back and, and it's like no let the film stay let the film stand for itself and i did i understand it and you did such an amazing job with it so thank you one more. Yeah, you, want, you want to talk a little bit about this whole thing of fame? And, like, you mentioned there, you were mentioning, like, when you come home, it seems most nice to your family and stuff. And, like, I feel like this, you know, everyone feels like you should be a you know, superstar and everything. And then you had the Kanye West documentary, which was fascinating when you saw that one about, you know, they fought, did the same thing. They fought Kanye West to his first album. And then you look at him now and he's a total mess. Like you paid a price for what for what happened, you know. I was just wondering about this whole balancing of. I think someone mentioned the comment about the people that get the awards for living in hell or something. Like that. Right. I like the comment about that. Oh well, I watched it. Well, like that the, the John Hyatt documentary. When I, I, that's what I'm kind of my I'm, I'm thinking like you know someday I'll be able to go to Nashville and just have people laugh at my jokes that aren't funny. <laughs> hey, we're gonna make record out here. <laughs> we sure are. You're paying me money to be you know, like that's my. But that's the way it is in the music business when you you go do those sessions like that. And I have friends, uh, Tyson in the movie right here, uh, he's really famous, but he didn't get he didn't get financially benefit a lot of all those people he influenced. Uh, the grunge scene, which he's, I mean, he needs a documentary on him, but it, uh, uh, it just the difference, I, I, and I've been to, when Stoney's been playing and, and the whole crowd, you know, singing the song, and they played at the OU games, it's the song of the third quarter, it just starts out. <laughs> It doesn't say your name. It doesn't say my name. <laughs> <laughs>
But, but then again, it's like, you know, like I can go to Sonic, and, or I can go somewhere, and, you know, and I see those people, you know, or the Toby Keith, Beverly goes, I ain't got his national. Because uh, everybody's bothering him all the time, or who, whoever. So I think in some aspects that is, and all my friends, that, like in this movie, have toured and toured and toured, but I've got to stay home and raise my son and be there for him for 18 years. So I've trade all the fame in the world for them to be. I'd like to raise your hands for another. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Affirmation. But uh, yeah, just being around there and being and my wife, because all my friends, you know, they were either divorced or they, they, their kids hate them. And, uh, you know, like, uh, but, uh, and, and, and those are the important years to be around, like those, the kids, because now if I'm gone, my son is, you know, it's no big deal. It, and he's happy and healthy, and that's all I could ever hope for. Yeah. What's next to the film? Uh, well, it's going to show uh, the Texas premiere is going to be at Lone Star Film Festival in Fort Worth, mm -hmm. which to me is a perfect place for that, as you saw. And that's kind of the launch of the name, you know, that song where everybody kind of knows where it's from. Uh, and then uh, we're we'll, still working on distribution. Now. What's next? I mean, I, is, there another, is there another album coming out? Are you working on new songs? I have been. So I did a, my last album with Jamie was in the, the movie Gold Anchor. So I did a movie. It was right before the right before the pandemic. We did the, an album. So Jamie played with Eric Clapton, and then the bass player was Gary Gilmore, who played with Taj Mahal and was on the Rock and Roll Circus. And he brought the the bass he played on the Rock and Roll Circus. And we go like, man, we're gonna do a record, and then we're gonna and we're gonna. I play a couple gigs in Tulsa and show these Tulsa guys, and then 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 this pandemic and the happening. So and then. And I go like, well, after the pandemic, we're gonna get together. And Jimmy passed away. And uh, I go like, well, now, okay, I'll work on another album. Uh, <laughs> and get up. So I've written some songs and uh, a bunch of mellow ones, but I hadn't want to release anything because everybody during the pandemic released something now. Yeah. So I think the next two years, everybody's just putting out all this just content, and uh, I see a lot of it just getting lost. And uh, I, I think I can I can wait a little bit. And, and, and do something. And now my son's in college now, so I was just like, okay, it's time to get back in the van and then and leave and go and uh, maybe tour the East Coast again. Maybe tour the yeah, tour the East Coast. Yeah. This is your first time in Connecticut. Yeah, yeah, first time in Connecticut. I came to New York in 2000 because I met the uh, uh, manager of G Love and Special Sauce, and he goes like, you gonna, he's from Connecticut. He goes, you gonna come to New York? We're gonna get you a deal. <laughs> and, uh, so I came. So I came to New York, and he had another band that was on tour with you too, the Fun Loving Criminals. And I got here and goes, okay, they're on tour. You're not getting a deal. We're just gonna hang out. I went and watched this weird Bruce Willis and Lars Ulrich blues band. And we watched all this weird stuff, and I go, this is great. But nothing happened. I didn't play. But that's the only time, other time I've been even in this area. Okay, the most important question. You had modern pizza tonight. What did you yeah. think of it? I did. It's pretty good. You know, I, I had Chicago pizza earlier, and it's like eating a loaf of bread. Right. And they're each they're each different. And uh, and uh, someone just goes like, you need to try New Haven pizza. It's the best pizza ever. And I go, you know, Norman, we got a pretty good <laughs> we got a pretty good pizza. Guy. And I tell you what, and I go, the salad bar. It's awesome. And the guy looked at me like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Them side boards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I go like, hey, I just said, uh, it's a tough crowd. <laughs> no, it was, it was good. It was different for sure. I mean, it was, if that's the, like, one of the best pizzas Yeah, and, and unfortunately, it's just delivered. Yeah. It's so much better when you're saving. You had Pepe's yeah. last night. Oh, yeah. And you had Modern, and you're going to Sally's tomorrow. Uh -huh. I, I, tra I, I yeah. trained yeah. them well. Yeah. <laughs> I trained them well. Yes. Um, is, oh, so far, where, where, where are you standing? Oh, I love it, and it's getting better and better. And like, and like you just said, delivery. Uh, but we're saving Sally's, my yeah. lovely yeah, girlfriend. I, I suggested <laughs> the tomato pie, the sliced tomato, yeah. and the sliced uh, potato. That's what I'm... Sending them for the Sally's. I, yeah, I saved Sally's for my lovely girlfriend for tomorrow night. We're yes. gonna we're gonna yes. enjoy it together. Hands down, beat Chicago because it's not as heavy. 
Yeah. Like when you get done eating this, you're going to go, you're going to get a deep dish pee, and I ate it, and I was like, oh, God, I'm going to die. <laughs> it's, it's, I, I, John Stewart referred to it as a mozzarella swimming pool for rats. <laughs> that's, that's, that's pretty accurate. <laughs> and John Stewart's good at that stuff. Okay. Guys, thank you very much for coming. Thank you for having me. Uh, we're going to put it on the screen. We're going to pick up the chairs. And then we're going to bring it on the mic. Yeah. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you for coming. Come to the other screen and enjoy Mike. Yeah. Thank you very much.